Hey everyone, it's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today I'm going to talk about the PS Audio Stellar Strata. This is a hybrid integrated amplifier. It has a lot of features on it. I'm going to go over a lot of features. I'm going to go over all of my, uh, I guess, lifetime experience with it and everything that I enjoyed or noticed while using it, and then kind of compare it to some other models and give you some final thoughts at the end. So this was sent to me for review. I've actually had this for a long time. Um, interestingly enough, over a year um, since I received it. And what was odd about this review is I actually thought I had already reviewed it because I had mentioned it in so many other reviews um, that I often compared things to, whether it was desktop speakers, other integrated or hybrid amplifiers, um, musical equipment, you name it. It's been brought up before. Um, and actually, I know when I did my Alta Audio speaker reviews, I mentioned this amp because this was my favorite amp to pair with that. So huge apologies to PS Audio for taking this long. Hopefully the other videos help get the word out in the meantime. Um, but either way, uh, I've been using this amp. It's been like the core backbone of my music listening experience whenever I'm not using headphones. Um, I have, it has to be thousands of hours on it at this point because I'm listening to music almost every single day. And it's been an absolute war course. So what's cool about this review is I can actually say from a long-term ownership just how good it's actually been. So thank you, PS Audio, for your patience. Sorry it's taken this long, but I hope this video kind of helps do it justice and at least provides uh, an honest ownership experience uh, for anyone considering this amplifier. All right, I will have links in the description below to help you learn uh, more about the product and take you directly to the PS Audio website. I don't do any special affiliate or marketing links with PS Audio. This has nothing to do um, with any contact I've had with them. In fact, I've worked through another person to get this amplifier. Um, so that will help you find and learn more about the product. So let's start with the basics. It is a $3,300 amplifier and it's available in black or silver. It is very unassuming from the front, regardless of the model, because it has a very tiny screen on it, a volume knob and a button. That's it. Uh, you actually have the little setup button and then this power button. And then the back is actually fairly loaded. And this amplifier has a ton of that initial build quality and heaviness to it that you'd expect from a more premium product. Now there's a lot to like about this amplifier. So um, it, let's start with the power. It is 100 watts times two at eight ohms and 200 watt times two at four. That is a big and noticeable difference over what some people may be upgrading from. So I don't have every single high powered integrated amplifier on the market. I have owned a couple and I've, I've reviewed one. I've owned and listened to uh, several. Um, but for the people who are upgrading from, let's say, you know, a Marantz receiver or, you know, Denon, a pioneer based product, and you're using that for your two channel music listening, uh, the difference is immediately apparent when you upgrade to something like this. So I'll get into the sound quality after, but it's not just from a power standpoint. The advantage to this is it's stable down to two ohms. So regardless of what speaker you have, you have a lot of overhead to work with, even though it's in an incredibly compact chassis and the power supply is built in. So there's no extra brick to worry about. Everything is in this tiny box. Now the Strata is from the Stellar line. It's not the flagship products that PS Audio makes, but it's more in the mid range. Uh, again, I mentioned that this is over $3,000. They have a phono preamp that's 2,500 that is built to look almost identical to this. In fact, it can support stacking. So if you put it on top, now you have a very high end phono preamp and that can connect with this via XLR or RCA. There is an ESS Sabre DAC in here. This uses the 9016 DAC, which isn't the highest end DAC, but it's it's the, because, because it's an integrated amp, it's not as big of a deal. It's designed to work as a cohesive unit, um, two channel DAC. Nothing crazy there, but it does work really well in this application. Now, the USB port on this, because it does have USB, which was a huge selling point to me, is you can plug this into a computer. Windows 10 and 11 doesn't need any drivers or anything. It's full plug and play. It does work on Mac. For you gamers out there, you cannot plug this USB port directly into a PlayStation. However, you can tie your television's optical output into the optical input on this. Um, it has, so on USB, the default for my computer, it went to 16 bit, 44 kilohertz uh, sample rate. Uh, you can go all the way up to 24 bit, 384 kilohertz. So you have a huge range. This isn't an MQA native device, which I think a lot of people will actually like. I've heard of some people flashing the firmware to just not have MQA on certain DACs in the past. Um, so I, I don't mind that it doesn't have it. The only thing I really wish this had at this price range for the 3300 is Bluetooth. 
Sadly, it doesn't. It does rely on the network. Now, it does have Ethernet. It does have Wi-Fi, so you can connect with Ethernet if you don't want to deal with it. However, the Wi-Fi was rock solid. Now, when I got this, I had this a long time ago, and it didn't work with certain Wi-Fi passwords, whether it was a really long Wi-Fi password or if your Wi-Fi password had spaces in it. Um, firmware updates fix that, so you always want to double check. You can do the update through the on-screen menu by pressing and holding and navigating through the menu there or just uh, going to the PS Audio website and throwing the bin file on a USB formatted flash drive. When you plug it in on the back and reboot, it detects the bin file and updates the firmware automatically. It should be in the twos now if you're not already. So as far as the rest of the input goes, I'm gonna look at it real quick just so I go in order to make it easier to explain. So I mentioned the ethernet and the USB port. That's a USB B port, not C, which is fine. Um, it has the optical input. It has two coaxial inputs. It has an HDMI input, but that's not ARC. That is an I2S input, which is kind of a, a special signal. It's not usually common. It does work with some other PS Audio products, but basically that separates the sync with the data. So your time sync with data um, for your audio. And it's just another way to listen to it. And that's how you get your higher DSD uh, rates. Um, you have an analog pre-out, which is variable pre-out. So if you're hooking this up, to a subwoofer with a built-in filter. You can also use this to connect to as a 2.1 system that way. Otherwise, you can use the variable out to connect to, let's say, another amplifier or whatever it may be. Um, three analog inputs. Now, analog one or RCA one is sharing the input with XLR, so you have to choose one over the other. Um, the XLR works exceptionally well. I actually tested and I was A-Bing different DACs against this because I wanted to see how the integrated one supported it. Um, or sounded versus an external. And then the binding posts. The binding posts are exceptional on this and it, it stands out. I mentioned this is a high quality product. It's not thin metal because it's not really flexible. It's built like a tank. It's very heavy and that carries into the banana posts on the back. Uh, very easy to use banana clips and very secure. Otherwise you can unscrew it and it accepts a fairly thick gauge wire as well. No, the analog input three on this is actually uh, an adjustable input. So you can have it set to be a variable volume. So you can still use the volume on this. Or if you're using this as a juiced up amplifier for your receiver system, let's say in the living room, for example, you have this amplifier connected to your two towers, um, but you want to still use a Denon or Marantz receiver, for example, for the multi-channel processing, video processing, etc. You can hook that up into input three here set it to a fixed volume. There is a mode on here to do so, and you dial in an exact point so it matches the other amplifier in your receiver that's powering your center channel and the other speakers, for example. It's a huge advantage because now you can uh, take advantage of the better processing, or sorry, better amplification power for movies, but if you don't need all that and you wanna just listen to really nice sounding music, you can switch to the other analog or digital inputs and take advantage of that. Um, all in a cohesive system without having to unplug stuff. So I like that it has that feature. Now, as far as I was using the Strata, it's primarily three things I've used it for. So I've used it for all my record listening, I've, um, which I'm using that uh, record hall turntable, the MMF 3.3. I love that table, uses an Ortofone Red. Uh, it's connected to a, a Vincent Audio PHO 500 phono preamp. So I don't have the Stellar preamp or phono amp to compare it to. Um, I'm gonna focus more on the amp itself. And then of course that went to the Strata and it worked great. Um, I also use this as a USB DAC to my computer. That was a huge reason why I was excited to use this. I have had the optical connected to one of my OLEDs over there. So if I was watching something and I just wanted it to be louder and cleaner, um, this was doing that just fine. But it is basically my record listening, the USB DAC, and then I would wirelessly cast to it if I'm doing stuff around my room, whether it's working, um, on this side behind the camera, I just want background music. I used it for that a lot. Now there's two ways you can do that, at least for me. Um, I'm using an iPhone. There's no Bluetooth, like I said, which is a little bit of a downer. I know it doesn't sound as great. Um, so there's a PS Audio app. Now the app works okay. I don't use it for like native curating and browsing of music. So it does do that once you get used to the interface because um, it's almost like a proprietary skin or a custom skin over some of the software uh, streaming services you use like Tidal. So if you wanna use Tidal and you're concerned about native support, you would just use the PS Audio app. It also supports Amazon, believe it or not, Napster, supports Cobuzz. 
It does not support Rune. This is not a Rune ready device. You can always get a Rune uh, streamer and connect it to the uh, analog input. Um, but surprisingly, I don't know if it happened with future updates, but I've been airplaying to this with my iPhone just fine. It's like a three second delay when you cast a song, maybe even four seconds, I have no clue. But um, if I'm just doing something casual and I want something quick while I work, I throw on a playlist and hit cast and it's it works totally fine. It actually got detected in the title app, not as an official streamer, but through the AirPlay interface on my iPhone. Otherwise, if either you don't have an iPhone or if you want higher uh, sound quality, just use the PS Audio app. I found that once it was connected, it was fine. I've only had like a few dropouts or desync issues in the past where it I had to like restart the app to reconnect. Um, I haven't used it much lately because I typically use the USB DAC or I've just been air playing it if I don't care about the higher sound quality at the time. But it works well enough. Like I said, I make my playlists on Tidal, the actual app, and then I use the PS Audio app just to play the playlist. Um, and that has a, a much shorter latency than using AirPlay. So if that's important, you know, I would just use the app. Now, when you're listening to digital sources, such as the USB DAC, you do have three filters to choose from. Uh, and again, you can change it through the remote or you can use it by pressing the buttons here. It's much faster to use the remote, so uh, I would just go with that. Uh, but the first filter is a slow linear phase filter. The second filter is a fast minimum phase. And then you have a fast linear phase. Um, I typically used filter one or two. In some cases, I actually liked two more. It was a little bit more fun with a lot of stuff I was listening to. Uh, filter one is the default. Um, it's probably the safest one to listen to, but in, some people are not gonna hear the difference and the differences you might hear, I don't know if it's placebo, maybe you'll um, think you heard something and you didn't or you keep flip-flopping back and forth. I just found that in a lot of cases, I was actually using filter two more, which was interesting. I expected to like one more, um, but for rock music especially, I loved filter two. Um, it, the guitars just sounded incredible on it. So I'm getting into the sound. I'm getting really close because I'm so excited to talk about that part. Um, but I really wanted to cover a lot of the technicalities first. The remote. I love the remote. It's comfortable. It's light. I've been on the same battery since I got it. I'm assuming, let's see if I pop the cover off. It is the Amazon Basics battery that came with it at the time. I don't even know if they still make those. Um, so the remote works well. The weird thing is, and the annoying thing is, I'm going to say this, this is a warning. It's not PS Audio's fault. For some reason, LG is encroaching on these freaking radio or remote infrared signals that this kicks out. When I turn this on, my LG TV launches the Amazon app. If I press volume up, the LG TV does the whole live channel plus thing. It has, it's not like an issue with PS Audio. For some reason, LG did, did weird codes. Um, if you have an LG OLED sitting below this, you may have issues. So uh, that is a really annoying potential deal breaker for some people. I can't stand that that's even a thing because LG makes some incredible OLED. So I'd imagine there's gonna be some overlap there. Um, I ended up just making sure I like kind of hide the remote or I just let the TV freak out on the side because typically I'm using this for music anyway and I'll turn the TV off later. Just a weird quirk, but I wanted to share that. So now it's time to talk about the sound, music, the best and most important part and the whole reason why people are looking at amps. Um, I like, almost everything I heard. It's it's so damn good. And I'm saying that because I'm trying not to come across as like a shill or someone who's overly excited and blind to certain other things. Um, I connected, even though this has the DAC built in, I still wanted to try other DACs on it just to test the amplifier separately. And also to see if I liked the DAC implementation on this, both from a, um, you know, a compression standpoint, filtering, et cetera. Um, so I compared it to an iFi uh, uh, Zen DAC and I also compared it to my topping D30 Pro um, using XLR on the D30 Pro. And in most cases, like 95% of the time, I preferred the integrated DAC the most. Um, it just sounded more cohesive. Uh, it blended things better to me and it helped the speakers kind of vanish a little bit better. It's gonna sound ridiculous, but I can tell you, I've had this thing for a year. I've, I can't, even ex begin to explain how many hours of critical listening I've put on this thing. Um, so it's not like a week's worth of trial and error. And I, I love the sound. So one example, 
and this is on filter two, by the way. Again, like I said, I was talking about different filters. There's a song from Blake Mills called Money is the One True God. It has this repeating like bass loop or bass riff that happens, and it sounds so good with the right system. And I have the Bauer uh, 606S2s behind me. I should review those at some point. Um, they're not a perfect speaker, but they're a very detailed, clean sounding speaker. Um, and they had, with Filter 2, that bass rift was just a little bit more powerful. And I'm trying to not say it was like a drastic boost in bass because it's not a bass boost, but at higher volumes, would you get this kind of amplifier power and that filter too with that song? It was absolutely magic. And I could not believe how good those bookshelves sound. I, sh I shut off my subwoofer because I didn't want that to hide what the speakers were really doing. Um, it was just remarkable how much those speakers can fill this room. This is a larger room. I think it's over 20 feet long. Um, and they had no problem filling the room. So, and when I switched to the topping stack, the topping stack was really clean. It was a little bit lighter and thinner sounding than this, at least comparing it when I was doing this to filter two. Um, but I didn't quite get that same heft in that bass region. Again, it's not a bass boost. It just seemed like it was a little bit um, lazy sounding, I guess. It was a little bit more pulled back. It sounded clean. It sounded good. But I lost some of that soul that that song had. It wasn't as passionate sounding, and that's what made me love um, the Strata in that on that track. And then when you listen to tracks like All the Stars by Kendrick Lamar, you know, you listen to certain hip hop tracks, you're really not going to hear much of a difference between most DACs. If it's a decent DAC, a lot of that goes away, and the amplifier power is going to start becoming more of the critical piece. Um, and then the same thing happens when you get into rock. If you, uh, is it Invincible uh, by Tool? Um, the, again, I was talking about the cohesiveness early. It's really hard to explain unless you have a lot of the equipment to A, B, side by side. But I just found the music more enjoyable on the Strata when I, than compared to using an external DAC hooked up just to the Strata as an amplifier. So uh, to me, even though it's the DAC may seem as a more basic DAC from a numbers perspective, um, the 9016 is more than fine. And it really comes down to implementation more than a chip. A higher end DAC, even a pro level um, ESS DAC versus the QM, which is the mobile version, um, which are more intended for integrated amplifiers like this. This implemented well can still sound better and does sound better than some other pro implementations. It's nature of, of or nature of how the manufacturer produces it. So I don't want to keep staying too technical. Honestly, here's the thing. I use this for any situation where it makes sense and where I can use this amplifier. It has so much power and overhead. It doesn't get crazy hot. Um, it gets slightly warm at high listening volumes for extended periods of time. But you can tell, I mean, the top of the chassis is mostly sealed. It doesn't run incredibly warm. It has a class A pre uh, preamp stage uh, and a class D output stage. And I just, you know, when I was listening, so I reviewed this Alta Audio Alex and the Alta Audio Alyssa's. And I liked the Vincent Audio SV500 amp I've reviewed in the past. Much weaker amp, 50 watts or 55 watts times two. Um, it sounded nice and it was warm and it sounded fun at lower volumes, but it became immediately apparent when you try cranking it on speakers like the Alta Audio speakers, which handle a lot more juice, that they were being held back by the amplifier. And then the Strata comes along and just Chuck Norris is its way into the room. Um, I don't know if that's the right analogy to use this, but you can tell when an amplifier has control over the speaker. And what I like about the Strata is it scales well. So whether you have, I think those are $800 bookshelves, $900 bookshelves, or a $10,000 pair of Alta Audio Alex, um, this is going to run with it. It's gonna make them sound absolutely amazing. So you can use this gear for a lot of different speaker types and pair it with a lot of different things. This is overall a very neutral sounding amplifier, but it still has a nice musical presentation. Nothing sounds dull and lifeless. And if I were to compare that to receivers, you know, I have Denon, I have a Marantz there, I have a Denon over there, I have the new Denons in my living room. And whenever you compare them, you listen to those and like, yeah, they sound, they're playing music, they get loud, it sounds clean. But there's always like a little bit of soul lacking or a little bit of the excitement and fun and passion that you get in a lot of music. 
And as soon as you switch it to the Strata, it's a whole different world of music. It's like, I honestly, this because I've had this for a long time, I go back to those amps thinking I'm like, did I screw something up with my settings? Is, is there something wrong that's making them not sound as as good? And the, the, I mean, I have pretty expensive Denon amps or receivers. And it's just how well this delivers the power and the sound. It really is a phenomenal product because, yes, I don't like the tiny screen. I'm going to be honest. There's some things I'm not a fan of. I wish there was a couple extra buttons on the front to navigate through my settings. It would save me time. Luckily, the ones I typically mess with once you dial it in are all through the remote anyway. So there's a couple things that could be better, but the most important thing is the sound, and that's seriously where it shines. Um, I just... I'm smitten by this thing. I love it for music. The glitch, I guess, the only thing... I've had a couple little hiccups with USB sometimes, but every single USB DAC I've had has had some kind of issue in the past. My Denifurb Series 2, my Topping, my Hi-Fi Men EF400 uh, integrated headphone amp, um, which, by the way, this has a dedicated headphone amp. It does like 3 and a quarter watt times 2 at 16 ohm and 300 milliwatts times 2 at 300 ohms. So it's actually pretty powerful. It's not as good as a real headphone amp, in my opinion. You can use one of the analog outputs if you want to do that or just bypass it altogether. That's just me. I hooked up $200 high impedance uh, Sennheiser headphones to this, the HD560S and the HD6XX to it. And I also went to the 32 ohm um, Hi Fi Man Planar Magnetics, the HE1000SE. It's over $3,000. I tried a variance of things. The headphone output on this has a 4 ohm impedance, or just under 4 ohm output impedance. So it doesn't work as well for headphones like the HE1000SC, in my opinion. Um, I didn't find the, the bass and cleanliness to be as apparent as when I use my dedicated headphone stacks. They work a little better. However, this blows the doors off of any receiver that's using a resistor setup. Uh, to step down the output power through the headphone jack. All right, now I did some comparisons of other hybrid integrated amps uh, with DACs, if you will, that I enjoyed or through research felt it was important to compare against the Strata. Now, um, you can pause it on the screen now. I'm not going to make go through every single thing on this list. I think the biggest competitor is the Arkham SA30, which on paper has excellent features for the money, and it stacks up really well against the Strata, it has things like the phono preamp built in, which could be good. You know, I haven't heard, I didn't use it as a phono preamp built in. I've always used my own uh, Vincent one. And it has eARC for audio extraction via HDMI. However, the Arkham integrated amp loses the USB DAC. So uh, it has some things that are better, but for how I use mine, the lack of USB DAC is a huge detractor for me. The other ones may give you USB or they may lose uh, extra power. So feel free to take a look at this and then do some shopping to see if there's certain um, products that come up with the feature set you like. But overall, I think at, when you start comparing it to some of the biggest ones on the market, uh, the Strata stacks up incredibly well against them. So this is obviously a long video. If you can't tell, I've had a lot to say about this. I do want to share some uh, real world everyday things that I noticed with this. So in addition to the whole remote thing with LG TVs, uh, the one thing that was a little bit odd to me is the, the minimum volume step from zero to one. One I wish was quieter. I wish there was more of a spread from like one to 10, for example. Um, there is a really cool trick where you can actually adjust the input gain setting independently for all nine inputs. That includes USB and it includes the wireless bridge, uh, which was the, the my most happiest thing to see. I guess because when you're streaming wirelessly, either through your phone or through the bridge, one can be a little bit louder. If you're on a phone call and you want it in the background and you're near the speakers, for example, um, I found that I wish I'd had a few more steps between zero and one. So all I did was I took the input gain uh, for each input and I went straight to minus 10 just to give me, uh, give me more spread in the lower volume range. I never got to 100 anyway, so I'm not, yeah, I'm losing some overhead up top can always bring it back if it's an issue, but you can adjust it. And that's a nice feature because some inputs may have a louder or softer signal. Um, so this helps you compensate that. So if you're toggling through, one isn't noticeably louder than the other. Overall, that did help. It wasn't perfect, but that one was one thing I noticed that I wish I had more control over. Now, two other things I noticed is there is a balance adjustment that you can make on the front of this, and it does quarter decibel steps 
up to 48 steps so naturally it's a 12 db swing left and right that can be important depending on how your speakers are placed so if one speaker is on an open side of a wall or living room and the other speaker is closer against a wall that's going to get some wall gain and it's going to throw off your sound stage so you can use that balance to kind of dial it in maybe play a test tone or just listen to a lot of music and fine tune it so you can get that pinpoint center stage when it needs to be so I do like that feature. The other thing is this is a balanced amplifier, so there's no bridging on this. Both terminals are separate. Do not cross anything over to think that you're gonna get you know, a 300 watt mono block, for example. It just doesn't work that way. Um, I just wanna say that so people don't short this thing out. So that about sums up my Strata review. You made it to the end. It was a long video. I had a, so much to say about this thing. Um, here's, I guess, the, probably the best endorsement I can give. I, I have a lot of audio equipment, and I'm fortunate enough where I get to keep a decent amount of the stuff I review, either because I purchased it straight up or the uh, audio companies are kind enough to let me hang on to it to use for extended periods of time. Um, this one has time to send it back. Now, when I got the email to say, you know, um, are you ready to send it back? How's everything coming? Um, the first thing I asked was how much was it for me to keep? Because um, I, long story short, like this thing so much that I think I'm just gonna buy it because I just, I can't imagine a situation where I'm gonna find something remotely close to this that's given me the level of enjoyment and reliability I've had. It's, like I said, it's been my workhorse. I have so much hours and experiences and memories using this thing that I'm like, man, when I get other speakers later, I'm never gonna know what it's gonna sound like on this amp, you know? So I, I really do like it. I think that if this has the feature set you're looking for, and it's in your price range for what you're shopping, I don't think the sound is gonna be a disappointment. You might get a little annoyed by the screen, whatever, um, now you know. But from a performance perspective, it seriously, it packs a punch. It's so misleading, because the chassis is not that thick, but it's so powerful. It looks good, it's understated, um, it's reliable, and it's fun to listen to. And I think that's the most important thing at the end of the day, is if you're actually buying this for music, the music has to sound right and this definitely lets your speakers shine. I really think it brings the best out of them, and I've used this for so many different things. I've never been let down by it. So uh, hopefully you found this review helpful. Thank you so much for making it to the end, and with that being said, I'll see you next time.